Did you watch any of the Dodgers Padres series over this weekend? If you watched the game yesterday, Dodgers led seven to one heading into the seventh inning. Heading into the seventh inning, the Dodgers. And the Padres came back. They scored two runs in the seventh, two runs in the eighth, two runs in the ninth, and pulled away. They won by one run, eight to seven, in extra innings in the 11th inning to steal a game in Dodger Stadium to complete the comeback. This was a tremendous regular season game, and the the Padres and the Dodgers have provided already two thrilling series, the three-game series in San Diego and now the four-game series in L.A. The Dodgers took two of three in San Diego. The Padres took three of four in L.A. uh, at Dodger Stadium. But this is what I will say. The San Diego Padres are the current equivalent to the L.A. Clippers. They're the little brother to the Dodgers. They have been, and they still are. You look at the two teams in Southern California, the Padres and the Dodgers, are fairly universally recognized right now as the one and two best baseball teams in the MLB. Dodgers pretty favored and should be the number one team. The Padres right up there with them at number two. But let's think about the Clippers for a sec. They became relevant. First when CP, CP3 was traded there, and he joined Blake Griffin, DeAndre Joran, Randy Foy, that whole crew. But when did they become legitimate contenders? They became legitimate contenders when they signed Kawhi Leonard in the offseason two summers ago, and they traded for Paul George. Well, what did the San Diego Padres do last year or two summers ago now? They signed Manny Machado and Fernando Tatis, who they drafted in 2016, the third overall pick, is blossoming into a superstar. They have been absolutely fantastic. But the reality is the Dodgers have dominated this, this series. It's it's pretty much been one-sided. The Dodgers have taken like 460 games. The Padres have won like 395 games in the all-time series. So this rivalry really only became a rivalry once Manny Machado joined the Padres and we started to see the emergence of Fernando Tatis Jr., And yet, with that, Lakers won the championship last year over the Clippers, even though the Lakers and the Clippers were both the two favorite teams to reach the Western Conference Finals and to win the NBA Finals. Lakers prevailed there. Dodgers last year won their first World Series since 1988. Here's the other interesting nugget of information. Clippers are one of six NBA franchises to have never won an NBA title. In baseball, the San Diego Padres are one of seven teams in the MLB to have never won a World Series title. So there are so many similarities between these two groups. Now, I'm not going to just dismiss the Padres because I do think they are formidable. They are a legitimate threat to the Dodgers to not only win the NL West, but to win the World Series. They have a legitimate, deep Star-studded team. I talked about Machado and Fernando Tatis Jr., Eric Hosmer, Trent Grisham. They've got deep pitching. Pitching. You Darvish. They traded for Blake Snell, Joe Musgrove. This this kid Weather or whatever. I I went I went to the Dodgers game on Thursday at Dodger Stadium. I went to the game one of the four game series with my roommates and some of his friends, and th- this this kid Weather threw like seven strikeouts and gave up no runs, no hits. No, no, take that back. He gave up no runs through six innings. The only hit he did give up was to Walker Bueller, which is still mind-boggling how the only only hit he gave up was to the pitcher. But the reality is, so they've got two superstars, and Fernando Tatis Jr., who hit another home run yesterday. He's hit seven so far this season. He's hit three home runs in the four games played against the Dodgers. This is a star-studded team as well. They're a really good team, so I do want to acknowledge that. And the, and the fact that they were able 
to get out, especially their pitching, able to work around the four times the bases were loaded and they were able to prevent any runs uh, from really coming in. They showed tremendous grit. They were not going to cave. They're mentally tough. They made timely hits. They collected timely outs. This is a well-coached, well-managed team. But when you look at the Dodgers, they're so much more superior to the Padres. And again, this is not a slight, this is not a knock on the San Diego Padres. It's just, you know, again, I went to that game on Thursday night and the Dodgers were tied 2-2, bottom of the ninth. They had guys on second and third with nobody out and they just couldn't score. Last night, they were three for 15 with runners in scoring position. They were one for nine. They struck out six times. They only hit one RBI in those situations. They left 16 guys on base. They had the bases loaded four times. And they could only produce four run, three runs. So, to me, all they have to do, if they can just connect on a couple of hits, this game would have been blown wide open. And to be frank, this series would have been over earlier. So, I think, I mean, Bellinger has been missing. Chris Taylor, this was the first game back. In the lineup, Gavin Lux is still injured and rehabbing. That's a lot of offense that could potentially be out there that you were missing. I mean, Bellinger is a former NL MVP. So the Dodgers still have the best record in baseball. They still have the best record in the NL West. But I will acknowledge that the Padres are coming. And the Padres are a good team. They're not scared of the Dodgers. Yes, the Dodgers beat them in the postseason last year, but they're not fearful of L.A. They've got potentially the firepower to match the bulk of the firepower that the Dodgers can throw at them. The only the only issue is the Dodgers just need to capitalize a little bit more with runners in scoring position. If they do that, then the series won't be that complete. But again, this is about giving the Padres credit. And they deserve it to come into Dodger Stadium, take three of four. One of the games was a blowout that they won like six to one. Very impressive stuff.